Hey, welcome to the Go To Physio Lumber Series Part 6. Now we're going to finish off this lumber series by debunking a myth and showing you the right way if you really want to stretch the psoas. Now the psoas isn't the be all and end all of things, okay? But what you're going to see now after watching the last five series is you're going to see why all of the stuff I've given you, unless you get all this right, there's no point even worrying about stretching the psoas. Okay, the psoas, it's been turned into this magical muscle that if you stretch it, if you release it, it's gonna, you know, it, as bad as so, it's gonna cure cancer. It's bull. Okay, I'm not gonna swear because I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on YouTube. What we need to do is we need to get everything doing its job, then mobilize the psoas and it will probably help. Okay, but if you are stretching the psoas, then please watch this content and I'm gonna show you how to actually genuinely lengthen it if you want to, okay? So with that said, let's get into it. I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so I think it's important as a new grad that we start to touch a little bit on anatomy in real life, okay? So one of the biggest kind of myths that I see is um, this psoas stretch. So people put your hands over your head in a warrior position and kind of reach back for me. So that's uh, what people say is a psoas stretch and they're half right, okay? But they're half wrong as well. And this is where I would encourage you to start looking at the anatomy, understanding tissues that are shortening, tissues that are lengthening, okay? So obviously as Pete does that, so if you go again, Pete, he's gonna extend his hip, okay? So distally that psoas, is gonna lengthen and all the tissues around the psoas and the skin, etc., the nerves, fascia, arteries, veins, the whole lot are gonna lengthen a little bit there. But what's happening proximally at Pete's psoas here in the sagittal plane is the rib cage is elevating, okay? The lumbar spine's extending, which means the proximal fiber of the psoas is shortening, okay? So again, Pete, if you do that again, you're gonna see his rib cage is gonna elevate, okay? So his lumbar spine is extending, which means that the psoas attachments at the lumbar spine are gonna shorten, okay? Because when I extend, that's the psoas is gonna help that, okay? The diaphragm is gonna shorten, the psoas proximal fibers are gonna shorten in the sagittal plane here, okay? So that's very, very important to understand that when you extend back and you elevate that rib cage, you're not really going to stretch the psoas, okay, in the sagittal plane here. Now, if you want to stretch the psoas in the sagittal plane here, and you want to fully lengthen it, okay, if possible, if that's even possible, what we would do in this scenario is we would extend Pete's hip, but we would have to use an exhalation to depress the rib cage. Because if I depress the rib cage, diaphragm is going to come up, okay, which means that the lengthening, uh, the tissues around the psoas, as well as they insert in with the diaphragm are also gonna lengthen, okay? So if we exhale, depress the rib cage and extend the hip, then you're gonna get a full lengthening of the psoas tissues, okay? So Pete, what I want you to do, inhale through your nose, I want you to exhale for a good two to three seconds because we want that rib cage to depress before we even start moving, okay? So you're gonna inhale, exhale for two seconds, and then on the third, fourth, fifth, six seconds, as you continue to exhale, I want you to slowly extend the hip. Okay, so inhale, extend. I wanna see that rib cage depress. And then as that's depressing, then I know the proximal fibers are lengthening, then you're gonna extend the hip at the same time. So don't lean back, just push forward with the hip. So inhale, exhale. That's gonna depress the rib cage. It's gonna post here tilt that glute anyway, and then he's gonna go slightly forward. Feel a little bit of stretch to the front of the hip there. And it's gonna be a very different feeling to lifting the hands overhead, okay? Perfect, do you feel okay? Yeah. So inhale, exhale for two seconds, let that rib cage depress, then on the third, fourth, fifth, then just slowly move forward. Now, he doesn't wanna move forward like this and lean back, because if he leans back, that's gonna extend the back and um, elevate the rib cage, okay? So that's um, very, very important, okay, in order to do that. Now, there's other ways as well we can lengthen that psoas in the frontal plane. So if I want to lengthen it in the frontal plane, it's going to give a little bit in the sagittal plane. So if I want frontal plane lengthening of the psoas here, Pete, I just want you to reach your right hand up overhead. Okay. And then he's going to start to reach this way. But obviously if he reaches this way, that's going to elevate this side, which is going to slightly shorten the fibers in the sagittal plane. Okay. So we're going to take a little bit of sagittal plane away lengthening here but we can still get as much of it as possible by exhaling. So Peter, I want you to exhale for a good two to three seconds now. And then as you exhale, you're gonna reach slightly and then keep going forward. Good. 
you feel that? Yeah. It's going to get a lengthening of those tissues. So that's frontal and sagittal. And then if we want to get his um, transverse plane, then we're obviously just going to start to, to move him this way a little bit. Okay, so the peak goes up again. Yeah, you're going to reach up. So we're going to get frontal, and then we're just going to get this hand to reach this way slightly as you exhale, but the exhale is the key here. So he has to exhale as he does that to keep that rib cage depressed because if he inhales here, he's gonna shorten the fibers in the sagittal plane, okay? So we want that lumbar spine not to extend, okay? Obviously, it's gonna extend a little bit now as we start to rotate, but we're just gonna open up those tissues. So he's reaching across and he's reaching down slightly as he exhales, okay? So we're just opening all those tissues. Now, you might actually do this one at a time. So you might just do the sagittal plane, you might do the frontal plane with the hands up as he exhales, and then you might just do the transverse plane, but you can combine them. But as I said, just be aware that when you get one motion in one plane, you're gonna to have to compromise another. So the minute we go into frontal plane lengthening of that tissue, we're compromising the lengthening ability in the sagittal plane. And that's okay, because that's what happens in real life. It's so in one plane, it's not gonna lengthen as much. In another plane, it's gonna maybe lengthen a bit more. And then in the other plane, then it might shorten, okay? But that's real life, that's real anatomy. And I just wanted to introduce you to that there today to consider that, that when you are looking to lengthen psoas or stretch psoas, that if you do those traditional warrior stretches, you're shortening the proximal fibers, okay? So it's just something to understand, you know, to open your eyes a little bit and consider the anatomy, both proximal and distal. And also, if you're inhaling or exhaling, what impact that's having on the rib cage and what, what actual indirect influence that's having then on the tissues as well as they start to move. Because that diaphragm is gonna move when you inhale or exhale, and that's gonna affect all the other tissues as a result. So there you have it. Hopefully that's gonna help you. Hopefully you can see now why this stuff's so important. Parts one to five of the lumbar series, unless you get that stuff right, don't even worry about stretching the psoas. If you are gonna stretch the psoas, rewind, watch the content, and do it properly. With that said, if you found this useful, head over to thegotophysio.com. I've got loads of resources there for you if you're a therapist that wants to differentiate yourself from other therapists and become that go-to therapist in your town. That's it for the Lumber Series. I'll see you next time with a brand new series to help you become that go-to therapist and help people who have failed traditional approaches.